So I'm presenting this today on behalf of, uh, of Chris Bartels, who, who made the presentation, but unfortunately wasn't able to, to stay through today until, until Wednesday. Um, so in the previous presentation, we talked about the, um, the strategic uh, plans becoming uh, across... Let me, I just have to change the... <laughs> change the idea, but being more broad, applying to more diseases, but here we're talking just within foot and mouth disease about the maybe the depth of the plan or that it also includes um, communicating with policymakers and engaging stakeholders at a very early point, um, recognizing that foot and mouth disease isn't really a goal unto itself, but it's meant to contribute to a broader government policy or the goals of stakeholders to improve livelihoods or, um, or to uh, open up different trade markets. So again, the global, the global foot and mouth disease strategy. Um, and through that strategy, we're able to, to mark or to, um, to depict countries' progression along the progressive control pathway in a, with a common, a common sort of uh, yardstick. And here we're in, in Southeast Asia dealing with three countries, uh, Myanmar, Cambodia, and Laos, that are currently evaluated or assessed as being in PCP stage one. Um, they're also members, important members of the Southeast Asia China uh, FMD roadmap which has a series of roadmap documents. The most recent one was developed in, in 2016. Um, and within that roadmap document, uh, it outlines a strategy that includes a vision for what FMD uh, control in a regional situation would look like, goals, um, objectives, mm -hmm. constantly becoming uh, more, more defined, more specific, and measurable. And also within that most recent roadmap document, um, risk, high risk areas are defined across the region. Um, the area of central Myanmar, which we've heard about in presentations on the first day in this meeting, um, as well as the border area between Laos and China and uh, this area in Cambodia. These are areas with substantial uh, cattle populations, movements, and a history of, of outbreaks. And this is defined within, the, within that CCFMD roadmap. So uh, the objective of this project was primarily to, to redefine a national control plan for the, for the three countries of, um, separately of uh, Laos, Cambodia, and Myanmar that's risk-based and eligible for them to progress to stage two on the PCP pathway. That's the main output. Uh, but before that, there was seen a need to develop a national strategic framework that outlines the objectives uh, for foot and mouth disease control uh, that can be used as a policy note or an advocacy document to get, to get uh, support for this approach from uh, different, different areas of government. This was done in a fairly quick timeline uh, from the end of last year uh, where the countries were introduced to the, to the PCP and RBSP. There was a regional workshop in December last year and that's when um, the, the contents of these national strategic framework were really um, put on paper by representatives from the different countries. And then these were finalized, uh, the draft was finalized um, working with each country in a, in a country workshop in January of this year. And currently they're working towards finalizing the RBSP, which should be presented at the CCFMD meeting coming up um, next month. So what is this NSF, or National Strategic Framework? Well, it's, it's a short document. Um, not more than five pages that outlines the vision, goal, objectives for the reasons for FMD control to, to communicate with government. 
It includes information about what is the technical expertise that's required, uh, what sort of investment is needed, and what are the roles and responsibilities of different stakeholders in order to, to achieve that vision and that goal. Uh, and one thing we realized as we were working with countries to develop this document, although it was primarily seen as a way to communicate with government, it's also going to be an important document to communicate with stakeholders as to why they should, should buy into this. So we talk about stakeholders, um, and I just wanted to define quickly who, who we mean. And they're very uh, diverse and, and broad, as, as I'm sure you're aware. There's farmers, different types of farmers, uh, commercial farmers who might be organized into industry groups as well as smallholders who may not have an organized voice. <coughs> Municipal governments um, who are responsible, they might have a veterinary services in their area. The Ministry of Finance who might decide which projects are worthy of funding. Uh, private veterinarians who might be called upon to actually implement some of the plan. Uh, ministries or, or agencies responsible for border controls, uh, vaccine manufacturers, and so on and so forth. And these stakeholders can be mapped according to the power that they have to influence what actually gets done, as well as their interest in having it done. And so for this national strategic framework, we want to focus on the people with high power, and the easier ones to convince are the ones who also have a high interest in it. So again, we have these, these words that all kind of sound the same, but we try to make them sound, mean different things. Um, so within the national strategic framework, the countries defined a vision, which is, you know, why bother with foot and mouth disease uh, control in the first place? Is it to alleviate poverty? Is it to improve trade opportunities? Mm -hmm. um, what will it contribute to the, to the greater good, if you will? Um, the goal, what something a little bit more concrete as to what what can FM what an FMD can actually help to contribute to this vision. Objectives we start to become measurable um, in terms of what you're going to achieve, and then the strategic components or the approaches to take to get to those objectives. And so I have um, some the the final text that was agreed by the countries, and I won't um, I won't read them all out. But to take Laos as an example, um, the vision for uh, progressive FMD control is to improve animal health, support sustainable livelihood, enhance food security, and to promote livestock export opportunities. Both Myanmar and Laos have tremendous incentive now to control FMD because of their proximity to China and the potential export market that that represents. So the goals are reflected um, in the vision, you know, to improve the animal health conditions, will improve animal health. There'll be a tra trusted trading partner, sustained incomes, um, and the need to strengthen uh, the veterinary authority so that it's a, seen as a competent authority. And then they also define some tangible outcomes to achieve those goals. In Cambodia, uh, it's very similar. Uh, good animal health practices. What's missing here more is the trade component because they don't have such uh, uh, an obvious or immediate <coughs> ability to develop their export market. But what they do have is a strategic planning framework for livestock development that's already been um, agreed. And so this, um, this strategic framework fit into that more broad um, pl uh, planning framework. And then finally, Myanmar, um, again, it's, it's somewhat similar to Laos in that they have tremendous uh, trading opportunities with China, and they want to be seen as a trusted trading partner in the region, and they recognize that the government can't do it alone, and there's a lot of interest from, from the cattle producers to engage now with government. And this is a picture of the inauguration or creation of a national cattle board where the, the veterinary services and cattle industries agreed to, to work together to define what are the operational requirements for safe trade with China.
So in doing this work, we would uh, recommend, um, we had a few lessons learned and thoughts for the future. And one is to have the discussion uh, when you're working when, with countries about what is the role of the veterinary services. In some places that we work, we find this traditional approach that the veterinary services needs to have all the answers and it's their job to get it done. And maybe there's a need to move to this alternative approach where they're in partnership with stakeholders um, and their, their role is to, to f understand what are the expectations of the stakeholders and figure out how that can best be achieved. Um, another lesson is that as well as the toolboxes we have with virology and epidemiology, there's also a real need to incorporate um, economic thinking into this, to, to include economic arguments about um, benefit versus cost of, of control strategies and understanding what can be possible returns for the investment needed. And, and then this really summarizes it all, that in order for, for change to happen in FMD control, we need more than just science. So if the, the goal is to facilitate trade as well as implementing FMD control measures and getting accepted into stage three, Alongside that, we also need to consider what is the uh, political and economic situation and to formulate policy that enables those changes. And so, uh, and back to the first slide, uh, the key messages again, we hope that this national strategic framework is one way to place FMD uh, in the bigger picture of, F of, uh, of <laughs> the bigger picture of uh, the veterinary services and, and the role of government in general in the country. So, thank you. <laughs>